For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Pursuant to Clause 2, Rule 9, I hereby give notice of my intention to raise a question of the privileges of the House. The form of the resolution is as follows. An article of impeachment of President George W. Bush. Resolved that President George W. Bush be impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors and that the following article of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. An article of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and the people of the United States of America in maintenance and support of its impeachment against President George W. Bush for high crimes and misdemeanors. Article 1. Deceiving Congress with fabricated threats of Iraq WMDs to fraudulently obtain support for an authorization of the use of military force against Iraq. In his conduct while President of the United States, George W. Bush, in violation of his constitutional oath to faithfully execute the office of President of the United States, and to the best of his ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, and in violation of his constitutional duty, under Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution, to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, deceived Congress with fabricated threats of Iraq weapons of mass destruction, to fraudulently obtain support for an authorization of the use of force against Iraq and used that fraudulently obtained authorization then acting in his capacity under Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution as Commander-in-Chief to commit U.S. troops to combat in Iraq to gain congressional support for the passage of the joint resolution to authorize the use of United States Armed Forces against Iraq the President made the following material representations to the Congress in SJ Resolution 45. Number one, that Iraq was, quote, continuing to possess and develop a significant chemical and biological weapons capability, unquote. Number two, that Iraq was, quote, actively seeking a nuclear weapons capability, unquote. Number three, that Iraq was, quote, continuing to threaten the national security interest of the United States and international peace security, unquote. Number four, that Iraq had demonstrated a, quote, willingness to attack the United States." Unquote. Number five, quote, members of Al-Qaeda, an organization bearing responsibility for attacks on the United States, its citizens and interests, including the attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001, are known to be in Iraq. Unquote. Number six, the, quote, attacks on the United States of September 11, 2001, underscored the gravity of the threat that Iraq will transfer weapons of mass destruction to international terrorist organizations, unquote. Number seven, that Iraq, quote, will either employ those weapons to launch a surprise attack against the United States or its armed forces, or provide them to international terrorists who would do so." Unquote. Number eight, that a, quote, extreme magnitude of harm that would result to the United States and its citizens from such an attack. Unquote. Number nine, 
that the aforementioned threats, quote, justify action by the United States to defend itself, unquote. Number eight, there was not a real risk of a extreme magnitude of harm that would result to the United States and its citizens from such an attack because Iraq had no capability of attacking the United States. Here's what Colin Powell said at the time. Containment has been a successful policy and I think we should make sure that we continue it until such time as Saddam Hussein comes into compliance with the agreements he made at the end of the Gulf War. Speaking of Iraq, Secretary of State Powell said, Iraq is not threatening America. Unquote. Number nine. The aforementioned evidence did not justify the use of force by the United States to defend itself because Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction or have the intention or capability of using non-existent WMDs against the United States. Number 10, since there was no threat posed by Iraq to the United States, the enactment clause of the Senate Joint Resolution 45 was predicated on misstatements to Congress. Congress relied on the information provided to it by the President of the United States. Congress provided the President with the authorization to use military force that he requested. As a consequence of the fraudulent representations made to Congress, the United States, the United States Armed Forces, under the direction of George Bush as Commander-in-Chief, pursuant to Section 3 of the Authorization for the Use of Force, which President Bush requested, invaded Iraq and occupies it to this day at the cost of 4,116 lives of servicemen and women, injuries to over 30,000 of our troops, the deaths of over 1 million innocent Iraqi civilians, the destruction of Iraq, and a long-term cost of over three trillion dollars. President Bush's misrepresentations to Congress to induce passage of a use of force resolution is subversive of the constitutional systems of checks and balances, destructive of Congress's sole prerogative to declare war under Article I, Section 8 of the Constitution, and is, therefore, a high crime. An even greater offense by the President of the United States occurs in his capacity as Commander-in-Chief because he knowingly placed the men and women of the United States Armed Forces in harm's way jeopardizing their lives and their family's future for reasons to this date which have not been established in fact. In all of these actions and decisions, President George W. Bush has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as President and Commander-in-Chief and subversive of constitutional government to the prejudice 
of the cause of law and justice and to the manifest injury of the people of the United States and of those members of the armed forces who put their lives on the line pursuant to the falsehoods of the President. Wherefore, President George W. Bush, by such conduct, is guilty of an impeachable offense warranting removal from office.